13 on your sidelines. Sponsored by Rand Insurance Group, a better path forward. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Regional Final Friday and the final 13 on your sidelines of 2022. I'm Jamal Spencer. And I'm Mark Skull Jr. We begin tonight in Division 4 with a battle of undefeated teams. It's the only undefeated showdown in 11-man football in the state. It's Whitehall versus South Christian in our 13 on your sidelines game of the week. The only other time these two teams met was in the 2014 Regionals when John Wasik and the Sailors defeated Whitehall on their way to a state title. A South Christian would open up the scoring late in the first quarter. Senior quarterback Jake DeHaan keeps it, runs it in for six. Now, Whitehall's defense would keep them in the game with plays like this. Tran and Ayler gets up and knocks this one away. They're only allowing 11 points per game. The defense doing their thing. Kyle Stratton decides to show off the arm, airs this one out from his own 46-yard line all the way down the field, finds Camden Thompson at the Sailors nine. He takes it in. Vikings are on the board. Second half, Vikings strike and get their first lead of the game. Nate Bolly powers his way like the Kool-Aid man running through a wall. And on the very next drive, now the Sailors are going to tie it and find themselves in a fourth and seven situation. DeHaan draws the offsides penalty, not once, but twice in a row, giving them the first down. A few plays later, he takes to the air, connects, connects with Nate Brinks, scores the game-winning touchdown as South Christian beats Whitehall 28-21 giving the Vikings their only loss of the season. We caught up with DeHaan after the game as he explains the strategy of the final moments and how the team will continue. Uh, it was all our coaches, man. Our coaches are great, and they made a great play call, and it all started with them. So they made a great play call. Yeah, we're just going to look forward to the next game one step at a time, and we're just going to do how we've always been doing the whole, time, the whole entire season. It's been working pretty well. So we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. They'll go on to face the winner of our next game. The first time matchup between Hastings and Edwardsburg. Nate Belt is just back from near the Indiana State line with the highlights. Yeah, you guys must be uh, pretty mad at me sending me almost to Indiana. What's the deal with that? <laughs> but Mark, don't worry. Didn't bring that back any breadsticks and nacho cheese because according to Michael Barron's, they don't, they're not real. So don't, I see you over there. They're not real. <laughs> Saxons looking for their first regional title ever, and they haven't lost since a week two game against Whitehall. Hastings getting the party started on the opening drive. Here's Isaiah Wilson staying on his feet, taking a handoff 10 yards and the score. Two points is no good. It's 6-0. Eddie's going to bounce right back, though, on the legs of Brett Allen, powering through the pile, going to tie it up. And they're going to go for two. It's Allen again. Get ready to hear this kid's name a lot because he had a game. Asking the hard-hitting questions, what's an Eddie? Eddie's just a guy. Brett <laughs> Allen, he's that guy. Look at that cut through the hole. And he is gone. He's going to chuck up the deuces here. A little Tyreek Hill. Longest play of the game by far. Eddie's go for two again. And who else but Allen? He's going to come down with the tough catch here. He outscored the entire Hastings team by himself in this one. Eddie's win 24-14. South Christian snap Grand Rapids Catholic Central's 42-game winning streak back in September. But since then, the Cougars have outscored their opponents by 36 points per game. Tonight, they hosted Portland in Division 5. It's the first ever meeting between these two teams after COVID-19 forced Portland to forfeit their 2020 playoff game. We jump to the second quarter with CC leading 7-6. Billy Mikolay picks up the rolling punt, makes a man missing Ole before he heads outside and takes it back all the way for a 14-6 lead. The Raiders respond as Mark Nobis finds Drew Miller wide open for a 40-yard score on fourth down to cut the lead to two. It's Miller time. Before the half, the Cougars look to make it a two-score game. Connor Wolf shovel passes it to Kellen Russell Dixon, who does the rest for a 39-yard score and a 21-12 halftime lead. Opening drive of the second half. The Novus to Miller fourth down connection works for a big gain into the red zone. That leads to a short TD as Portland cuts the lead to 21-19 after three. The Cougars put the game away in the fourth as Connor Wolf isn't crying wolf. He calls game. Catholic Center wins big, 42-19. Five years ago, Forest Hill Central started the season 12-0 on the way to a regional championship. Tonight, they had a chance to do both of those things again as they face East Lansing in Division II. The Rangers and Trojans met tonight for the first time since 1995. 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Mason McDonald going to the end zone for Ty Hutkins. His leap and grab looked like Randy Moss. Gives the Rangers a 14-point lead. They led 14-3 at the half. It was 14-10 in the third when the Rangers scored on their first possession of the second half. Running back JT Hartman punches it in from seven yards out. Rangers led 21-10. Same score in the fourth, but here come the Trojans. Dalen Adams looking for the speedster Dorian Jackson, and he's got him. 
19 yard score as EL trailed 21-17. Four seconds left in the game now. Fourth and goal for East Lansing. Last chance. Adams, flush from the pocket, looking to the end zone, scrambling, floating one up. It's picked off by Hudkins. That's ball game. The Rangers win a thriller 21-17. What a finish. In Division 6, West Catholic faced Lansing Catholic tonight for the 10th time overall and the 6th time in the postseason. The Falcons came into tonight riding a four-game winning streak that has them averaging 42 points per game. We're scoreless through the first quarter and in the second quarter, the Air Force commit Tim Kloska goes for the corner and he's got it. The five-yard touchdown gives West Catholic the 7-0 lead. In the second half, Lansing Catholic kicks it off to the Falcons. Nolan Reinhardt misplays the ball in the air, but it does not matter. He heads up field, breaks a tackle, and then Reinhardt, like NSYNC, is tearing up the hearts of Lansing Catholic as he goes 87 yards for the touchdown. It's 14-0 West Catholic. Still in the third quarter. Touchdown, Timmy. Klaska rushes for his second score of the game. This time from the one, it's 21-0. The Falcons did not keep their foot off the gas all night. Bernie Varnesteel throws it up to Ryer Snow for the 41-yard touchdown. For the first time since 2017, West Catholic wins the regional title with a 37-7 victory over Lansing Catholic. They didn't touch the regional trophy because the Falcons want more. The 13 on your sidelines, Protector of the Week, sponsored by Rant Insurance Group. It's time to hand out some hardware as we honor the 13 on your sidelines, Protector of the Year. It's going to be an O-line that's been money all season. The big guys up front from the Muskegon Big Reds. Last week against Coopersville, Muskegon put up 40 points on 358 yards of offense. The big Reds have put up 37 points per game this season, and the offensive line helped quarterback Makai Guy become a two-time 13 on your sidelines MVP of the week. The line is made up of Nakari Lane, Carl Brooks, Miguel Botello, Makai Wynn, and DeAndre Hudkins. Tomorrow, the Big Reds will host Zeeland West in Division Three regional action. It's a rematch of the 13 on your sidelines game of the week from week five when the Ducks won 38-36. That's a 1 p.m. kick at Hackley Stadium. Also tomorrow, Caledonia is coming off that revenge game against Rockford. The Scots will try to keep momentum going as they host Grand Ledge. That will be a 1 o'clock kick at East Kentwood in Division 5. Oak Ridge will host the undefeated Gladwin Flying G's in their first ever matchup. That one starts at 2 at Erickson Stadium. And finally, in eight-player Division 1, Martin will host the Brown City Green Devils at 1. The winner gets a trip to the state finals at the Superior Dome. Coming up